What's up all? I am the Grumpy Old Collector and I'd just like to take a second and welcome you all into my first rating video. We're going to be rating the box, rating the box of 2021 Upper Deck MVP that we opened up in the last video. So hopefully you've had a chance to check that out. If you haven't, please do. Um, some decent cards came out of there surprisingly, so it's not too bad. Um, not huge viewership, not, no demand on the giveaway yet, so I'm going to move, move that uh, graded Marcus Johansson card into the next set here for the Opeachy box opening. That will be next, a box of 2021 Opeachy, so stick, stay tuned for that video. Um, so like I said, I moved that uh, giveaway of the Marcus Johansson graded card to that. So I'm going to close that giveaway now, so um, don't bother reaching out on Instagram. That one's closed. We'll do her again here in the next one. Um, but uh, what I want to do right now is just talk a little bit about how my rating system is going to work, since this is going to be the first box I've ever given a rating to. I'm going to score the box out of 10 in 5 categories for a total out of 50 and then we can compare it to other box openings and stuff, but I haven't done any yet, so this will be the first one and kind of the standard, so we'll have to see if the next box can score higher or lower or where it lands. But um, without further ado, the first, excuse me, the first category in the rating system will be the appearance. We'll take a look at these cards and let's see how the base cards look, um, how all the inserts look and stuff. Um, are they nicely colored? Is there variations? Is there some difference to them? Does it look like some time and effort went into them? We'll give that a score out of 10. Uh, secondly, we'll score it out of 10 on quality as well. Um, did I get a bunch of damaged corners? Did we get cards missing jersey pieces? That kind of stuff. Um, along with qual in the quality category is going to be doubles. To me, if I got, you know, 20 cards and 7 or 8 of those are doubles, that's ah, too many and not acceptable. But a uh, sneaky surprise about this, and we'll get into that when we get to that category. Uh, the third category I want to get into is value. Um, um, based on what we paid for this box, what we think we can get back on eBay, and what Beckett says about it. So it's kind of a three-way, or a three-directional chat in that, and we'll give that a score out of 10 as well. Uh, the fourth category out of 10 will be variety. Um, did we get a bunch of different cards? Did we get a bunch of different inserts? You know, is it all the same one type of insert? Do, is there five types of inserts that all look the same? Which is me, that would be a low score as well. And the final category out of 10 will be collectability. Um, if there's other sets out this year, which there are, there's um, the Opeachy, which we're going to open next, is out as well, Upper Deck. There's a few other sets out there as well this year, so we'll compare it to those. Um, is this a set that collectors will be talking about in a few years? You know, oh, that was a really nice set. Um, I really wanted to get one of, you know, um, an example of Colors and Contours. So we've got a Jordan Binnington here, one of those that we'll talk about. He's a Colors and Contours hit from that box, and it's actually a pretty nice card, you know, um, other collectors that are going to want to do that. A good example would be 2019-20 Allure. I knew quite a few collectors that actually were trying to make some of the subsets because they thought they were really nice. The yellow taxis, the green quartz, that kind of stuff. Um, and then that will give us a total score out of 50, and like I said, you'll kind of judge for yourself, you know, a score of 10 or 15 would probably be pretty bad, whereas 38 and above to 50 would be a real, really good box. And again, we're not judging the product on a whole. I don't have enough boxes for that. We're just judging the box that I opened in the video, which, like I said in the last one, was 2021 MVP. So with that said, let's get into this first set here. Um, the first category will be appearance. So here's some of the base cards we'll take a look at here. So there's a Colorado Avalanche Nathan McKinnon base card from this set. So it's not a bad card, again, I've seen some, definitely there's nicer cards out there, there's worse cards out there. But to me, it's, it's very plain, it's very simplistic, there's not much to it. Um, when you take into effect, here's some of the other inserts that we got from this set. So your uh, mirror mirrors, your high speeds, your net crashers. To me, the net crashers and the high speeds are very similar. Um, sim background to the mirror mirror. Um, got some short prints here, some veteran short prints, I did get a couple of decent guys. Some rookie short prints, um, we got some all third stars, uh, some silver scripts, net crashers, colors and contours, and a first star. So you get some variation in here, but when I look at the appearance overall of this, to me it's not that impressive. This card looks nice. Some of the silver scripts are pretty lame. These and these are copies almost of the base card with just a different color. So I'm going to give this set, honestly, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10 in terms of their appearance. Quality. Now here's quality. As I was looking through some of these, I didn't see hardly any damaged corners. I did point out one, I think it was maybe on the Jordan Bennington and the Carey Price, unfortunately, where it did have a softer corner to it. But taking a look at these, most of these corners are pretty sharp. 
Like I said, the first three so far are so good. There's a little damage on that one there. But for the most part, if somebody wanted to grade these cards, obviously you wouldn't grade base cards. But most of these look like they've come out pretty nice. So we take a look at that. We look at some of these as well. Again, maybe just a little nick on some of the corners. Overall, pretty good. But here's something impressive. So here's my two stacks of the base cards that we received from all the packs that we opened in the one box. I didn't count them out. I guess I probably should have, so I could give you an exact number. But that's a decent stack. There's got to be at least 40 or so cards in each of that stack. Not one double. Not a single double did this set give me. There's a Nathan McKinnon variation that I got. That's why I thought in the original video you might have heard me say double. And here they are. And they're not doubles. They're actually a picture variant. So there's those two. And I had the same thing happen with my Alex Ovechkin. Let me just see, I put Washington on the top here because I wanted to show you guys that as well. Here he is, Mr. Ovechkin and Mr. Ovechkin. So again, I thought this was a double, but it's not. It's a picture variant. Alex Ovechkin. Hopefully I fixed the light up a little bit better, guys, so you can see the cards a little better this time than last time. You'll have to let me know if you can or not. So there's that one. Again, a nice variant. So in terms of quality, I guess there was some nick corners, but no doubles is astounding. I'm going to give these guys a 9 for quality on these cards. Alright, so they got a 4 in the first system. In the first rating category, which was appearance, they get a 9 in the second category. So they're up to 13 so far, bringing us to the third category. Beckett value, market value, which is eBay, and what I paid for the box. So in terms of value, you can pick these boxes up, so I'm ranging from somewhere, I guess, to 65 to 75 bucks a box at the time, depending on where you went. So obviously there's base cards, there aren't much. Buck fifty, two bucks on the on the mirror mirror. Um, for the rate collector, a Johnny Goudreau, you, I can probably sell it on eBay for a buck fifty, two bucks to a Calgary guy. Um, the high speed, not a lot of value there. Um, again, I, that's probably just going to be a giveaway. I'll toss it in when you buy a card. I always give away a card when somebody buys a card. Doesn't matter if you buy a card for me for a dollar or six hundred dollars. I always throw in a card just to, as a way of saying thank you. Um, I got a couple of net crashers over here with a couple of bucks each. Probably won't be able to move the Bergeron. I might end up just having to throw that in as a giveaway. I did get an Elias Pedersen, so I'll probably be able to get a buck fifty or two out of that just for collectability. I got a fair pile of silver scripts here, but again, no real big names. And these have low, low value according to Beckett. So when they're only a buck or two in Beckett, there's no point even trying on eBay. But again, a nice little collectible card is a throw in for somebody who likes them. A, few, a dollar as well. These ones are all third stars. So I got a few of those that were a dollar. Um, these are the rookies. They're short printed rookies, and they all land in the three to four dollar range. So that's not too bad. So that means on eBay I'll probably be able to get one to two bucks a piece. Say five to ten bucks all in. These are short printed veteran cards, very similar to the short printed rookies, but obviously they're not rookies. Getting Crosby and Price and a few of the other ones that I did, I'll probably be able to get, I don't know, Beckett on those is anywhere from two to five bucks. On eBay, I'm going to say probably two, th two to three bucks maybe with some of the bigger stars. Crosby, I might be able to get three bucks for. As we move into the bigger ones from the box, um, this was in the first pack I opened, I believe, or one of the, or the second pack. It was very close. It's a Jordan Bennington Colors and Contours, um, and it's numbered 22 out of 250. It's actually a pretty nice looking card, so Beckett on this, unfortunately, is only about six bucks. So when I sell that, I'm probably going to ask about 250, and I might get 250 or three bucks for it. I don't know if you can see the numbering on the side there or not, but so again, there's that guy, and then we got a Carey Price first star. There was a small ding on the corner, but it actually looks all right. It's not horrible. This one is number 25 of 25, up in the corner there, and that's how I know she's a first star. They're serial numbered out of 25. The second stars are serial numbered out of 100. And the third stars, like these guys here, don't have any numbers. I believe Beckett on this guy is 40 bucks. So I'll probably ask 25 or 30, and I'll probably land in that area because it's carry price. So here, this last guy was our box hit. This was the colors and contours as well. He's Braden Holtby, number two of three, with a nice purple auto on there. This is colors and contours purple. And let's see if you can see that two of three up in the corner there, sorry. Very nice card, not too bad. No Beckett value on it, obviously, when the cards are numbered that low. 
Um, Braden Holtby would be more of, I guess, a mid-level star. Not an unknown, but not a Sidney Crosby or something, which would fetch better. Um, I'm hoping 30 or 40 bucks isn't out of the question with that card, so on eBay. If we did all that, we factor that in, we factor in what I paid. This is a fairly cheap product, it's not too bad, you guys. I'm, I'm gonna give this, give this in terms of value, I'm gonna come out a little bit ahead here, we're gonna give this a 6 for their value. So they've got a 4 on appearance, a 9 on quality, a 6 on the marketability or whatever. We're going to have to find a better name for that category. But a 6 there, bringing them up to a 19 as we head into variety. So they did bring in lots of different inserts, you guys. Like I said, with the all-stars and the scripts, the silver scripts, the gold scripts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but to me, some of them look awfully similar. Like If you take a look at this as a net crasher here, the Elias Patterson. And this is a high speed Cam Atkinson from Columbus. Now to me, these two cards, sorry guys, I'm still learning how to hold these in front of the camera, are very similar. They got a mere glossy background. Right. One's got an orange to them, you kind of see they're, to me they're, they're very similar. And I could even throw this Johnny Goudreau mirror mirror into that same category as well. Again, another nice card that I don't mind, but it looks very similar to the other inserts from this set. And when I speak about that as well, <clears throat> pardon me, so I'll put some of these back here. We want to get into um, where they're getting into these. Here's their short printed rookies, which is basically just an emerald or teal version of the base cards. Like I showed you guys the Nathan McKinnon base at the start. So here is one of their rookies. It's one of the Leafs short prints. And if you can see, really the only difference, you guys, is just the coloring. The teal or the emerald as I was calling it. Same thing, here's the Sidney Crosby short print variant. Uh, exact same as the rookies in the base cards, just in that teal color. Not serial numbered or anything. Um, there is some variations to the to the colors and contours. The all stars, there's the first star, second star, three star. They're all the same design. Um, just short printed or autoed. <sighs> in terms of variety, guys, I'm only gonna be able to give this another four. There's just not enough. There is variety, but there's not enough difference to the variety. We've got quantity. We don't have enough substance to me, and to me if that makes sense. So another four brings that up to 23, I believe. And we've got one category to go, and that's collectability. And like I said, there are some other sets out there. Um, nothing huge yet. The upper deck has come out, obviously, with the Lafreniere Young Gun in there. Everybody's talking about that set, um, similar to with uh, the upper deck when McDavid was a rookie, everyone was talking about that. There was a Lafreniere up for an, um, redemption card in here. Unfortunately, we didn't hit it. Wouldn't that have been nice? But, again, that's, that's, it's, it's a player that makes you talk about a set in most cases, not just the set's beauty and whatnot. In this case, I don't think it's going to be a very memorable set. It's going to be a decent box break for me, depending on how some of these go. Like I said, it was, it was awesome to pick up this Braden Holtby early on. Carey Price is nice. Um... But overall collectability, I just don't think it's there. It's more of a, if you've got a young teenagers or some younger kids that are just starting to get into hockey and card collecting, this might be a good starter set for you guys. Like I say, at that $65 to $70 price point for a box, you're, you're, you're fair in there. But to me, for the collectability, it's, it's going to be another four. There's not a lot there to bring it back to, to make you want to go and get those more boxes. Again, unless you have kids that you're opening with, then there's lots of stuff to it. But most collectors are adults collecting for themselves or with their kids alongside. <clears throat> so we'll give that a total 19, 23, and 4 is 27. So our first box, you guys, is going to score a 27. It's the MVP 2021 with a final ranking of 27. It currently sits number one overall, as since it's the only product I have ranked yet. But stay with me. Like I said, I do have a box of 2021 Opeachy that I'm going to open. That's going to be the next video. Um, I won't be doing a giveaway video on this, which I'd like to do with every box opening, because like I say, there just wasn't the interest. Hopefully as I grow this YouTube and more guys follow along and watch, that'll grow as well. Um, I do have a couple of boxes of the 2021 Upper Deck with possible Alexis Lafreniere Young Gun in there. So I will be cracking those as well. I have some older products online. Like I said, it's going to be some nostalgic fun. Um, I didn't want to tell you in the first video what it is, but it's 9091 Upper Deck, and I do have more than one box coming. 
Um, ideally, in there, we're looking for the Pavel Bure, Sergei Fedorov young gun. You get a gradable one out of there, you've got yourself a decent, uh, decent hit for uh, what I ended up paying for these boxes, which was pretty good when I had to do some digging and hunting and found them. But without further ado, ado let's conclude our first ranking video <clears throat> with a 27 overall for 2021 MVP. You guys, like I said, if you want, you may want to go down to your card shop and check this out for yourself. My final total, 27 out of 50. Join me for my next video. It's going to be a box opening. It's going to be 2021 Opeachy. See you then. Join the grumpy old collector later on for another box opening.